body. And it's a lot, I put it in mystical motherhood in so many places because it's not really talked about by like medical professionals. I mean, there's, a, we wear tight pants. We, we, um, tighten that area, our wombs and, and we, it, we do it in every form of our life. This need to control our food, this need to control our environment, this need to control our career. And it sounds like through your he- process of healing, it's, you just let go and you released so much, you know, and, and then, even through the writing is a form of release of these emotions. Mm -hmm. And some women, you know, you have a, even if you have an abortion or whatever, however you lose your child, if you've had abortions, if you've had miscarriages, if you've had traumatic births, I'm here for you. And I feel you right in because it's, every woman it's it's so critical to us and we move on i mean some women may just go to the bar that night we don't we don't really know how we're covering up our pain and and don't so use what we've talked about here today as your process of healing and going inside and making space in your life yeah absolutely um uh, yeah, definitely get rid of the control top stockings. Yeah. <laughs> They're not comfortable anyway. <laughs> I know, but it's almost like, I mean, why, are, why do we wear Spanks, those? We look Spanks are like, like, like fun. If you have to wear them, wear them for a little while, but like get them off as soon as possible. Because admit it, they're not comfortable. They're, they're just not comfortable. comfortable. Yeah. You put a baby and, in there. You don't want to wear them. And send loving and healing energy to your womb. And don't forget that these things happen. Heal them before you go in. And this is a side note, because as a labor and delivery nurse, it wasn't on the questionnaire, but when anyone came into, into, you know, working with me, I would always ask their husbands to leave. And I would say, have you ever been raped? Have you ever been sexually abused? I mean, this is off subject, but it it will tie in. Have you ever been sexually abused? Have you, um, have you ever been physically abused? Uh, and I would ask these things because all of those traumas, they live within the second chakra and there would be a higher tendency for a C-section rate because the woman wouldn't be able to relax that region and have the cervix open. I mean, this isn't some scientific proven thing, but this was kind of a known thing to me. And so I wanted to know if I needed to be with that woman the whole entire time to help her relax her cervix. Like I wouldn't, I would not leave that room because she needed me to hold her hand to give birth to relax her womb and it was because it would reignite the tr- the trauma that occurred in the second chakra and she couldn't relax i mean who could if you haven't healed it and so you know these miscarriages and these traumatic births and the sexual you know anything in that area that isn't healed it lives there. And I see it now with clients that have fibroids or clients that have, you know, massive hysterectomies. It's an, you know, fibroids can be an energetic growth of something that you're maybe not healing a relationship or creativity problem. So with any of these issues around birth and around our sexuality, we need to heal them before we have our next baby so that they don't come up in our health. Do you agree with me? Yeah, absolutely. And I think the one thing I'd like to add is that sometimes the traumas you feel haven't necessarily happened directly to you. They could be ancestral traumas that are manifesting during this really, you know, important time in a woman's life is that we carry either a memory of things that have happened to us, you know, it's epigenetics and you carry it through you and something that may have, you know, you're the traumas that your grandmother may have experienced or your great grandmother or an aunt, like, this is all passed down and our, our cells remember what happened to us. I mean, this is the, how evolution happens this is how, you know, if you see a bear, you should run um, because somewhere in your history, a bear maybe ate your family member. So this is just how we learn and evolve and things that have happened to us in the past can sometimes manifest now, yeah. particularly as women are in this really important energy shift as they bring a new soul down. That is so true. And I have many, many of my clients create a genetic tree. So if you're listening right now, you need to do this. You need to create a genetic tree and understand your history. And to say, let's say you've had, um, you know, multiple miscarriages or you have an issue. I mean, this is a much broader subject. You need to ask your mom and you need to ask your grandma who in your family had that happen. And we carry the emotions and, you know, thought don't, it's so much consciousness is so much broader than our limited understanding. And epigenetics is 
the way your environment affects your genes. And you can change your environment and change the DNA of the child, which is a the next book I will write. But um, you need to know what happened to your family because th- those emotional wounds still live within your energetic body and within your physical body on so many levels. And we can heal that. For So what mystical motherhood's purpose is, is to help women heal these generational problems so that they don't give it to the next child and we create a new earth by birthing a new reality through us. You know, mm-hmm. women can, you know, my birth, my reality I'm birthing is mystical motherhood. And, and all the women I speak to, they're going to birth new realities through these children that have these clean genetic lines that, cause they work through these family issues. It's so important. Do you feel like you did that when you were, you know, healing? Yeah, I definitely feel like I did that. Um, even just the conversation that I had, you know, you know, learning more about my my own mother's process of being pregnant and giving birth that I just never heard from her or when you're learning that my grandmother actually, you know, I never knew this but until after I had a miscarriage. My grandmother had two miscarriages in addition to her three children. And you just don't know because no one talks about these things. You just don't know what's in your family history unless you have asked. So as difficult as it is to kind of ask your grandmother or your mother, you know, about their sort of personal Um, you know, intimate history in that way. I think it's really important that we do ask so that we can acknowledge that and, and help heal ourselves and also help them heal through whatever they may have experienced in those times. And that's our power. And so I'm always trying to figure out ways to give women their power back. And you likely healed it for your whole family. I'm going to guess that your grandma did never, never healed those. She had to go on and be, you know, sturdy, strong, like what you would, you immediately did right back to work, right? You healed it for every single generation. How does that feel to you? It feels pretty empowering. Yeah. It's so empowering. Yeah. And that's what's happening on the world right now. And it's like, give yourself, like, hold your heart right now. Like, it makes me want to cry for you because you've done so much work to change the DNA of the child that's going to come through you. That's what you're doing because, you know, behavioral epigenetics is proving, proving scientifically that DNA, it's not, we don't, we don't have to get what our grandma and grandpa's had. It's, it's only our thoughts, beliefs, emotions, and our environment that creates these health issues and these psychological issues in our life. That's a scientific proven fact uh, coming, emerging in science, the most growing field right now. And I'm going to apply that fully to creating a child. Mm -hmm. And it's, and so with that, women can bring, take their power back and really change this earth. And I want to applaud you for doing that and, and, you know, committing to bring down a conscious child and calling you've done everything possible to do it. And I cannot wait to have you back in the future to share your journey of, you know, postpartum when one day when you are bringing your child down. Yeah. Thank you for coming today. Is there anything else you want to close with? Um, just one piece of advice. Um, it always makes you a little upset when I share this, but when, it took me a long time to come to this realization, but it was so hard to accept that we had a baby and then we didn't have one. But I had this realization um, over like lots of meditation. It just came to me that the fact that these children choose to incarnate you with you and your husband or your partner for six weeks or for 14 weeks or for five months or whatever it is, is so special yeah. And your partner could give this being a home and parents and let them take another step on their karmic journey. It's, sorry so much. No, it's so beautiful. I love that you're sharing this. It's so because it's because you've healed so much from it. I mean, it's, it's like so powerful. I wish I could give you a hug. <laughs> virtually <laughs> um, but you know it's just something really important to remember that as painful as it is it's such a blessing that these beings chose you do you think that the being to that chose you helped to awaken you absolutely and I mean, so do you think that now you see this child I think it was a girl right um as a gift right so you see yeah I mean 
it was something I never want to go through again. And it was so painful, but also this child taught 